Welcome to DC Today. Brian Seitel with you. It is Thursday, February 1st, first day of February, kicking off this sleep year month. We got a nice rally in stocks, actually, and, and the Dow actually was up 369 points, which is more than yesterday, it dropped 317 points. Um, the NASDAQ is still lower by about 1% from yesterday. So yesterday's sell-off was mostly undone, um, but not completely across every part of the market. But yeah, the, I mean, the big news has been the Fed and the end of its meeting yesterday and keeping rates the same, which everybody knew, of course, would be the case. But them kind of walking back the March rate cut, taking that off of the table was new news. And for a moment, stocks didn't like it yesterday, and then they seemed to turn around today. The bond market was unfaded. It rallied yesterday with yields going lower, and then it rallied again today with yields going lower again. The 10-year was down another nine basis points. So look, I, if you read into this, the bond market isn't buying what the Fed just said, essentially, because you've got two-year rates that are down 17 basis points in two days. So two-year rates are short-term treasury rates. They're closest that's tied to Fed funds. And you've got a, a two-year treasury to Fed funds rate inverted by over 115 basis points now. So look, I, I think the market is pricing in what is inevitable, which is that it's either March or it's May, but it's probably not any farther than that. And since this is February, we're, what are we really talking about here? 60 to 90 days. And so markets tend to move in advance. And that's what we're seeing. Uh, interesting that the NASDAQ wasn't up more just because it is more rate sensitive. And I think that narrative of valuation is just coming to play inside of markets. And you're seeing that with the Dow go up more than it went down yesterday and, and things like uh, high duration stocks not recover quite as much. Um, so the um, Fed futures for a March cut yesterday were at 35% and they're up today by to 55%. So again, it's markets aren't really buying that March is off of the table. We have a good amount of data. In fact, we have non-farm payrolls out tomorrow, but we'll have two more reads, uh, uh, readings on inflation and then more jobs data before that meeting. And so we'll see. Either way, bond market's pricing in, in advance, as frankly it should. But it's interesting, there's, you know, the, the fact that this rate tightening cycle has it affected consumers a little less isn't that shocking. We had a good, good economy going into it, number one. We had this phenomenon of excess transfer payments from COVID hit everyone's accounts and, and store up a cash cushion. But also we have 89% of consumer debt that is termed out. Most of that is in mortgages, but that's very different than the U.S. government, which has a whole lot of debt rolling over the next year and two years. And so interest rates are important, especially when you're already running deficits at full employment. Tomorrow, we also had today um, some, some good data on the uh, economic front. Again, this is a theme that has been ongoing where economic data continues to be strong. Um, ISM manufacturing numbers out today were at 49 versus 47 expected. Uh, that's better than expected, but also below 50. So it's not quite expanding, but still better than expected. And then productivity today was up three and a half percent, uh, sorry, 3.2% versus, versus two and a half. So uh, good economic numbers is the way I would, I would sum that up in the economy. And then I'd also say on top of that being good news, being good, which it is, um, you did have a little bit of cooling in the labor market. And so, you know, jobless claims came in at 224 versus 214. It's a little bit lower on jobless claims, continuing claims. Uh, I'm sorry, a little higher on jobless claims, meaning more unemployment. Um, and then continuing claims were also a little higher. So good economic data, uh, followed by a little cooling of the labor market. And then inflation that is running right around where the Fed wants it to be and a light at the end of the tunnel on when things were going to start going the other way, I think is what markets are looking at. And so you have, you have uh, a good, good day today uh, to start off February. And again, the, I guess the one thing that would worry me a little bit is just that there's a lot of stars aligning right now that all look, look pretty good, really. I, I don't have a lot of negative to say other than just, I suppose if one thing concerns me, it's that there's a whole lot of people in the soft landing camp and the data is supporting the narrative. And so the contrarian or skeptic inside of me just wonders what uh, what I'm missing. Speaking of which, today there there was more stress in the banking system. Um, New York City Bank, which is a very old bank in the city and commercial real estate lender, 
was off 35% yesterday. So big sell off. They cut the dividend. You know, they're trying to hoard cash and, and it's a, a further stress in that commercial real estate part of the market. And then today they were down 11%. And so what I wrote is that, you know, I don't know if it's uh, weeks that we're going to find uh, 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 either that settling out or some other outcome, I think is more like days than weeks. So we'll, we'll see for what it's worth. The Bonson Group is supporting New York City office real estate because as of today, we just signed our, our new office lease at 1336th. Um, that we're very excited about. So it'll take uh, probably eight, nine months for build out, but we're excited about that. So hopefully our contribution is helping the, the, the commercial real estate market in the city a little bit, at least. Um, I did have a note from a question in there on the Ask Brian section about India. Um, we are investors in the emerging markets as, at the Bunsen Group. The question was, uh, it's done well, and do, you know, do you guys invest in that market? And of course, the answer is yes. We don't invest directly because, frankly, um, it'd be foolish to the, you know, trading Indian stocks on local exchanges in rupee and, and, and not having boots on the ground or, or real expertise into the nuances of a very, very uh, intricate market would not be something very useful of our time. And so we have a, an outside partner that we utilize for it, but we do have exposure there. And we look at it in a similar fashion as is in the U.S., as we do most investments or all investments, which is. We look at bottom up fundamentals. You know, what's what are the numbers saying about a company? So it's less about trying to pick, will Vietnam outperform India, will outperform Brazil or China, and more about where are we finding good value in which parts of the world in the emerging market world, if that's the subsector. And and it, sure enough, we we uh, we do have a larger exposure inside of India, inside of that one growth sleeve in our portfolio, which is only owned by several or, or some clients that need an extra growth component in their portfolio. But um, I wanted to answer that for anybody interested. Um, tomorrow, like I said, we have non-farm payrolls out, which markets will be paying attention to. Um, I'm expecting more of the same, which is just slight cooling in that employment picture. That's what we've seen now for several months. We'll have Dividend Cafe in the inbox tomorrow as well. And as always, I wish you a lovely evening and reach out with any questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm.